What's the biggest misconception about income taxes and foreclosures? Well, what continuously happens is remember this is this is a bad thing. You know, people have invested money, they've lost equity, um, and the last thing they're thinking about at this point is having to pay income taxes. Uh, it's traumatic. You've lost a property. It may have been a property you've owned for a long time. It may have been a property you built. And people sometimes get very emotionally invested in these things. So to be faced with a tax bill when you've had something sort of ripped away from you, when you really have suffered a loss, can be pretty traumatic. So let's take another example. Let's say that our investor went out and bought a piece of property for 100 and borrowed 90 to buy that piece of property. And then over time, um, values skyrocket. And now the property is worth 200 doubled in value. So our investor goes to the bank and says, you know what, I'd like to borrow some money. And the bank says, we'd love to give you some money. And they give him 175. So he replaces the existing mortgage of 90 with a new mortgage of 175 and takes out proceeds of 85. Puts that, pro puts that money in his pocket and then takes that money, let's say, and spends it on five other things. Now the debt comes due. The debt can't be replaced and the property is taken from him. Well, what has happened? Our investor is sitting there saying, wow, this is terrible. I lost a property worth 200. I don't have it anymore. I really lost 25. From a tax perspective, he doesn't have a loss. He has a gain of 75, 175 of proceeds, which is the amount of the mortgage, versus a tax basis of 100. So he's suffered a gain of 75. Now, if he's taken that 75 of excess proceeds and invested it in five other deals which maybe have lost money or aren't liquid or can't be monetized and doesn't have any money to pay the tax, this is, this is a bad result. This is a real problem. Now, most people are not sitting there thinking, wow, I have this big tax bill to pay when they lose a property. They're saying, man, I really lost money on this, when in reality, they're facing a huge tax bill. Now, we're talking about a non-recourse mortgage right now at least that'll be a capital gain. And that capital gain will be taxed at federal rates of somewhere between 15 and 25, depending on how much depreciation has been taken. And if you're a city resident, it's another 13%. So it could be somewhere between um, 28 and 38%. Those rates are scheduled to go up 5% federally beginning January 1st of next year. So you could be as high as you know, 38 or 43%. In a recourse transaction, it's even worse. Let's go back to our facts. We put 175 worth of debt on the property, and our basis is 100. And let's say that the fair market value of the property at that point is 110. So we have a gain of 10, which is the fair market value of the property of 110 over the basis of the property, which is 100. So 10 of capital gain. From 110 to 175, it's cancellation of indebtedness income, which is ordinary income. So we've now converted a capital gain into a partially capital gain and an ordinary income transaction. Now that ordinary income is gonna be taxed at rates as high as 48% right now, going up to 53%, a significantly worse tax position. Invariably, these things happen at the absolute worst possible time. So as we were talking about just a second ago, this tax bill is going to come due when times are bad, there's very little liquidity, and maybe our investor can't really afford to pay the tax right this second. That's one of the biggest misconceptions, I would say, that there's this disconnect between owing money and actually losing assets. The second huge misconception has to do with transfer tax. There is a transfer tax due on a foreclosure transaction even though there's no cash. So you've lost the asset, the asset goes back to the lender in exchange for the, for the deed, you haven't received a nickel, yet there's a transfer tax due. And transfer tax in New York City is 3.025% of whatever the total consideration was. In this transaction, it's gonna be on the total amount of the debt. So that is a very stiff tax to pay. Now, often that's gonna be paid by the buyer at foreclosure because the buyer is the only one that's going to have any money to pay that tax.
But if you have any kind of recourse exposure or guarantees on that sort of thing, people don't really think about transfer tax in this context and can very often be surprised with this floating obligation out there that they weren't expecting. Does he get any credit for the value he lost? He gets no credit for the value he lost. Remember, that value was just in the marketplace. He was never, it was never recognized. He never paid for that value. And essentially what he's paying for now is the tax he never paid when he took the money out in the first place on the financing. But even though A really feels like he lost something because he lost 25 of value that he never was able to capture, he does not get any kind of loss or tax benefit for that 25. That disappears into the vapor, but he is stuck with the 75 of income for which he still has to pay a tax on. What is the tax treatment of a deed in lieu of foreclosure? A deed in lieu of foreclosure is, is just a process where you skip the foreclosure process. The, the foreclosure process can be very long, contentious, expensive. Sometimes the lenders and the borrowers get together, they say, we're just going to work this out. We don't want to go through this whole process. We don't want to spend the time or the money. And the, the borrower says, here's the deed to the property. It's yours. Have fun. Go have a good time. The tax ramifications of a deed in lieu versus a foreclosure are exactly the same. It's the same transaction for tax purposes.